We will call our meeting to order. This is Wednesday, November 4th, 2015. It is 7 p.m. We'll start with a roll call, please. Mayor Skidmore. Present. Commissioner Dickinson. Present. Commissioner Reed. Commissioner Kaler. Commissioner Graves. Present. We do have a quorum. We do have a couple commissioners absent tonight, uh, but they'll be joining us next time. So we want to welcome everybody here in the gallery. We see some Boy Scouts here, so welcome. We also know people are listening on KOFO and the many people watching us on the Government Access Channel, too. So we will start with our Pledge of Allegiance, followed by invocation by Wendy Lee. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I know that we can already see Christmas decorations, but we're going to spend a little time in November being grateful first, if you'll bow with me. Father God, thank you for the opportunity to be here. Thank you for our homes, the food that we've enjoyed today, the community that we get to live in, the state that we enjoy, as well as a country that we are ever grateful for and know that so many don't have that opportunity. We thank you for your guidance of our leaders, national, state, and local. We ask your blessing on them tonight and especially upon this meeting. Thank you for the many things that we get to celebrate in November and to remember with a grateful heart all that you have blessed us with, all that those around us who follow you have blessed us with whether that be in veterans who we celebrate next week or just the opportunity to be together as families or as a community. We give you all the praise and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thanks, Wendy. <coughs> <coughs> well, we will start with the consent agenda. We have the minutes from the October 19th study session, the October 21st regular meeting, and the October 10 through 12 special call meeting at the LKM meeting in Topeka. Do I have a motion to approve these minutes as presented? Mr. Mayor? Commissioner? I move that we approve the consent agenda. Is there a second? I'll second. Okay. <laughs> All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. I think we're good for the consent agenda. Uh, any public comments tonight? Not that I'm aware. No comments? Okay, so I'll just go on to number nine, declaration. At this time, I'd like to give the commissioners the chance to declare any conflict or communication they've had that might influence their ability to consider today's issues impartially. We're okay there? Okay, thanks. Move on to item number 10. A public hearing for the purpose of considering condemnation of a single-family structure located at 412 West 1st Street. This public hearing has been called for the consideration of the condemnation of a single family structure located at 412 West 1st and the city staff will present the details on this request for condemnation. So we'll <coughs> need to open this public hearing and Wendy. Okay. Uh, as you said, uh, Mayor and Commissioners, this is the condemnation hearing for 412 West 1st. As just a general reminder, um, typically how we do this is uh, we identify a night in which we're going to hold a hearing, we, we, we publicize that ahead, um, and then are open to taking comments. We do this small presentation, but we've already talked with you as staff twice already about this once when we called the hearing and then, and then earlier this week our building official, Jim Sherman, spoke with you as well. Uh, this structure suffered a fire um, August 9th. Uh, 2015. <coughs> the utilities were of course then put right on hold and the structure was posted unsafe and unfit for human occupancy August 11th. Um, in addition, we um, uh, had to order the structure barricaded and, 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 and contract with a contractor to get that done so that it didn't pose an immediate hazard to the neighborhood um, or suffer any additional loss because someone were to get in there or themselves get hurt. Um, the fire personnel estimated the loss to be 100%. Um, it, it, it inside is pretty much, um, got we can. The, uh, after we made contact with the owner, uh, he indicated that he was going to plan to demolish the structure himself. However, uh, since that time we've not heard from him. He's not obtained a permit. Um, and he hasn't had any further addressing with us. It, there has been a couple of attempts to reach him again, but that hasn't been successful. Um, 
the conditions in a case of a fire sometimes there's insurance proceeds and so we would start this process and then use the insurance proceeds unfortunately in this case there is no insurance proceeds so um, when we were evaluating what structures we could look at for condemnation later this year <coughs> based on the timing of this and the severity of the damage we selected this structure to move forward and put other structures on hold uh, temporarily thinking that it needed to be removed quicker than the others the findings that our building official has on this is that there are conditions that have a blighting influence on the properties in the area. There's defects um, increasing the hazard of fire accident or other calamity. There's structural defects. The white wall sidings and exterior are not of a quality and appearance that is similar to the rest of the neighborhood and that there are violations of health, fire, <coughs> building, housing, or zoning and it's not occupiable in its current state and it would take some significant work for it to be done. After our after uh, you, if you were to pass the ordinance we've attached, um, we've asked for, the owner and is in fact given an opportunity still to take action on their own, whether that be to remove or to rebuild. Um, it would have to be a pretty significant plan for us to consider a rebuild. It's very, very unlikely that that could happen, but it is uh, their privilege to have that opportunity. Currently, we have uh, called this resolution um, sorry, I'm not, I'm not looking at the one you have. Typically the ordinance, if I can find the right one, there we are. It gives them 10 days to start <coughs> work um, and that they have to complete within 30. If they don't complete within the 10, then we bid it out so that we have bids. Um, in fact, usually we, we even sometimes will bid it out in advance of that so that at the end of the time we have an opportunity to go forward. Since he's given us indication that he might still demolish, we'll give him the full 10 to get back in touch with us again to see if there's any opportunity for it to be private <coughs> dollars or public <coughs> dollars. But failing that, uh, the city would then contract for the demolition, um, award a contract, demolish the structure, and place a lien on the property so that we could recover the funds if that property were ever sold or if ever was an attempt to develop. Any questions? I noticed that we have some leadership from Frank Franklin County uh, uh, participants here today so this is a good opportunity for them to see how this works um, and one question I had the first time we did this was um, we don't own the property once we demolish that's still owned by the uh, property owner and uh, we do, is there a something against the property for the cost of it yeah we put a lien on it for the cost that we have incurred in the process <coughs> that includes the publications <coughs> etc um, and the demo the cost of the demolition it will also include in this case the cost of boarding the structure up and securing it in the interim um, and then we can recover off the property as this has other um, case actions on it there's another there's other opportunities to recover some of those uh, expenses if the if if the Generally how it works, I will say, is that we place the lien and then we recover when the property is sold. <coughs> the only times it's a little different is if it goes on a tax sale first. There have been times when we've then acquired because we have a greater interest in it. Hence all the, in some cases it can be six, eight thousand dollars for the demolition. This is not that, it's a much smaller structure. Um, we might have more in it than the taxes and in order to secure our position, we might acquire and sell and recover ours or get more of our, of the public's dollars back. Um, but typically, it just happens upon a transfer at some point in the future. And I was going to ask you too: the current owner has he mentioned anything about trying to restore it, or is he only no, talking he, about demolition? He, he was only? in agreement that it needed to be removed. Okay, so it's not an issue with regard to restore restoration. Not so in this particular case. Yeah, that's always like an option, but it's unlikely. For yeah, that's why I would agree. I don't, it's, it's very rare <coughs> you'll see one where they were fire will make a stance at 100% damage. It's, yeah. it's very <coughs> common. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Wendy, thank you. I guess I'll ask if there's any comments from the audience. If there's a landowner or any other persons that wish to speak on behalf of the, this topic, we'll sure entertain any comments. If not, we'll go ahead and close the public hearing. We'll move on to item number 11. A resolution to condemn an unsafe and dangerous residential structure <coughs> located at 412 West 1st Street in the city of Ottawa, Kansas. This resolution authorizes the governing body to declare the residential structure located at 412 West 1st Street as an unsafe or dangerous and, and to direct that such structure be demolished or repaired and made safe and secure. I will entertain a motion. 
Mr. <coughs> Mayor. Commissioner. I move that we condemn the property located at 412 West 1st Street. Okay. Is there a second? I'll second. There is a second. Uh, we take a roll call vote, please. How do you vote? Commissioner Dickinson? Yes. Commissioner Graves? Yes. Mayor Skidmore? I vote yes to your motion carries. Thank you all. Thanks, Wendy, for your good work. And be sure and tell Jim thanks too. I need part of this work as well, so good job. Uh, item number 12. Request for approval <coughs> to submit access management construction project application. This application to construct a new intersection at US 59 and Kingman Road, adding a left turn lane on US 59 southbound and a right turn lane on US 59 <coughs> northbound and 750 feet of paving on Kingman east of US 59. And Jim? And Welcome. then the warrants justify the installation of a traffic signal. As you recall, this was discussed at the uh, study session on the 19th. <coughs> uh, I have nothing additional to add unless you've uh, generated questions since that time. No, anybody have any questions on that? I think we're good on this, and I think we've already seen the cost estimates, and then again, that's county expense, right, for our understanding? Well, if you recall, there was a very generous offer. <laughs> <laughs> I don't recall. Kind of <laughs> it slipped out the minutes. I yeah, how was that? It's yeah, <laughs> not the minutes anymore, I guess. What happened there? Okay. No, but I agree, Jim. I think it's a great idea. It's a great plan, I think. Obviously, with our future growth in that direction, we need this, and, and for safety as well. So I appreciate mm -hmm. you bringing this to us. <coughs> no more questions? All right, we'll entertain a motion on number item number 12. Mr. Mayor. Commissioner. I uh, move that we approve item number 12. <coughs> All right, is there a second? I second. All right, I'll take a roll call vote on this, please. How do you vote, Commissioner Graves? Yes. Commissioner Dickinson? Yes. Mayor Skidmore? And I vote yes to motion carries, so. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, appreciate that. Item number 13. Recommendation from Neighborhood Revitalization Program Review Committee. The committee recommends five residential structures be included in the neighborhood revitalization program. These structures are located at 730 South Cypress, 802 South Pecan, 708 North Locust, 731 South Oak, and 839 South Olive. So I don't know if we have, Wendy, you want anything to talk about this? Um, these, just for the public's benefit, um, neighborhood revitalization is a program that we do in partnership with the county and the school district and um, selected areas of the community um, have this as an incentive <coughs> for property owners to reinvest in existing structures or for new structures to be built in neighborhoods that may um, have uh, a more difficult time redeveloping or getting full property value. These five structures are all remodels. That's not always the case, but it, it is in, in tonight's cases. Uh, two of them have um, rebates that are the, the first year is 100%, years two and three are 75%, and years four and five are 50%. The other three are 100% the first year, 50% two and three, and 25% <coughs> year four and five. And that's because of the different areas of the community. We placed a greater emphasis on uh, the quarter closest to Main Street where we had um, some of our older uh, neighborhoods. And then the other neighborhoods where they also have structures that are older and, or have uh, less investment, but um, they didn't get the same rebate option. All of these are according to the policy that the, the city, county, and school district have adopted. The, each member of the government, there is a member of each governing body um, who votes on them. <coughs> and you basically are approving their application. They do have to demonstrate that they, in fact, do meet the thresholds after the project is complete, and if they don't, then they don't get the rebate. So it's not just a given that they'll get a rebate. It's only if they meet the thresholds according to the policy. Well, it really is a great program. It's just so the viewers know that the tax mm -hmm. collections on these properties will not be decreasing, but they just won't be increasing as quickly as they might have had they not applied for these rebates. And so it's a great program that encourages people to fix up their homes and businesses in this area and uh, not penalize them by taxing on that in enhanced value, but eventually we will catch up to that. And that's good. That's right. It's a good program. It really is. Any questions for Wendy? Thank you. All right. Thanks, Wendy. I'll entertain a motion on number 13 then. Mr. Mayor. Commissioner. I propose we add the five residential structures to the neighborhood revitalization program. Okay. Is there a second? I'll second. All right. Good. Good. Let's take a roll call vote, please. How do you vote, Commissioner Dickinson? Yes. Commissioner Graves? Yes. 
Mayor Skidmore. And I vote yes to motion carries. Thanks, Wendy. Next item number 14. <coughs> Kansas Department of Transportation request for right of way dedication. It is staff's recommendation to dedicate 0 0.05 acres of land for a reconstruction bridge uh, over I-35 on Montana Road. And Wendy's back up again. <laughs> Sorry, I could have just stayed up. I didn't look uh, closely right. enough. Uh, this is immediately adjacent to the property that the city uh, acquired for development of a new industrial park. So the bridge over Montana, um, the bridge that is east of 59, just for folks that maybe aren't as uh, aware of where Montana is on the rural side, um, that crosses I-35 is to be replaced by KDOT. That is the eastern boundary of our new industrial park. So it certainly will help us to have that bridge replaced and serve as another way to get to the new industrial park. Um, and for KDOT to do that, they are um, changing some of the er area there to make that bridge <coughs> appropriately sized and the right height over I-35. Um, and they have asked for this small little piece of ground off the most northern, northeastern part of that area. So 0 0.05 acres is just a little bit of, a, uh, of additional right-of-way in the Montana um, road right-of-way area. Um, there's, no, <coughs> there's no cost transfer happening here. It is the city, if you should pass it, deeding it to them at no cost um, because we know that that bridge will serve our community as well. Very good. Just the point of point oh five acres about the size of this room, if I'm not guessing that <laughs> not right. Not very big. About 2,000 <laughs> square feet, so it's not much to deal with. You're right. Okay. Any other questions of Wendy? <coughs> We're good. Entertain a motion on item number 14, then. Mr. Mayor. Commissioner. I move that we approve the right of way dedication um, in item 14. Okay. Is there a second? I'll second. There's a second. All in, uh, let's do a head and roll call vote, please. Com how do you vote, Commissioner Graves? Yes. Commissioner Dickinson? Yes. Mayor Skidmore? I vote yes to. Motion carries. Thank you all for that. Item number 15. Request for approval of bid for Automated Weather Observing Station, AWOS. Three bids were received for an AWOS system at the Ottawa Mun Municipal Airport. Staff recommends approval of the lowest bid, which was received from Atlas Electric in the amount of $165,620. And Michael, you up. Good evening, Mayor, Commissioners. Um, as, as I stated Monday night at the study session, the automated, I'm, I'm going to abbreviate that, the AWOS <laughs> will help pilots file a direct flight pattern to our airport, which is required by a lot of companies and corporations. So as we try to develop our business districts, like <coughs> the one on the north end of town and the one in the new Rock Creek development, area um, this tower or this station will will allow corporations to file direct flights here um, is Jack would have to answer any more specific questions than that so I apologize for that but we did take did solicit bids we did get three bids the uh, lowest bid we also feel is the most qualified bid so asking for your approval to proceed with this installation and purchase okay <coughs> any questions anybody? I think the two takeaways that I had from the, the presentations the multiple that we've had on this are one it's really about safety um, yes. this is really about the safety of our local pilots but also the pilots that fly into our airport um, but also that this is kind of a catching up with with what other airports have been doing for the last 10 years and we're really just coming where this is something that's not moving us forward but it's really just catching us up to where we need to be that's exactly correct um, the last city I was at we put one of these in <coughs> I think it was eight years ago so and the, that size of community is obviously a lot smaller than than Ottawa so we're just we're catching up and if I remember right part of this was going to be funded through the, the FAA, FAA? is that right? Or? No, ma'am. It's through the uh, KDOT Aviation. Oh, okay. This is a, a state grant, not a federal grant. And how much was that? Uh, that grant is for up to $108,000, which leaves us the, the remainder. And I guess what, what fund does that come out of our share? Is that, Richard, is that a question of you? What fund does that uh, net come out of? It will come out of our um, special streets fund, which is appropriate because 
we receive gas tax back off of aviation gas That's right. and we will meet our match out of that fund. Okay. Any other questions? I, I so think we I'm will we will pay cash for this project. Okay. We no debt financing. Good. I think like like what Sean said, we're just catching up. We've gotten a lot of we've done a lot of improvements at our airport, and this has been kind of one that's been a little bit behind. And as we get everything up to the same level where we should be competing with other airports too. So yes, sir. Well, I appreciate. I, it. I might also add just anecdotally that Blaine and I were in a meeting today with some other <coughs> leaders in the community, and one of the things they commented on is that they uh, flew in to the Ottawa airport. And the landscape looked better to them, and and actually we received some compliments over uh, some another major airport that's close to us, which I won't say, <laughs> but uh, that our lights were on and things were working, and they were complimentary of the work that this community, that this commission has done in the past eight years on that facility out there, and feel that that is a positive step forward for the community. Great, I agree. <coughs> okay. Any other questions anybody have? I'll entertain a motion on item number 15 then. Mr. Mayor. Commissioner. I move that we approve the bid from Atlas Electric in the amount of $165,620 for the automated weather observing station. Very well said. Okay. Any second on that? I'll second. I guess so. Good. John? <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a roll call vote, please. How do you vote, Commissioner Dickinson? Yes. Commissioner Graves? Yes. Mayor Skidmore? I vote yes, too. Motion carries. Thanks, Michael. Good job. Jack, thank you. It's a good job. Mm -hmm. Go on to item number 16. Ottawa Solar Photovoltaic <laughs> Project. Oh, I'm sure glad you had that part to read. <laughs> uh, it's in yours, oh, too. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Project to install a solar <laughs> photovoltaic system to the water plant water plant location which will generate electricity to the city's electric distribution center i'm hopeful dennis can come forward and tell us how to <coughs> pronounce that word we'll see what we can do <laughs> <laughs> photovoltaic actually is how it's pronounced but, but uh good evening mayor and commissioners good um a conversation that we've had uh, a couple times now uh, related to uh, a solar array that uh that we would like to establish at the, the uh, Second Street compound where the power plant and water plant exist there at the corner of Second and Beach. A uh, couple of uh, just informational things. Uh, this is a small array, 15.6 kilowatts, uh, consists of uh, 60, uh, 260 watt panels. And we could eventually put about 90 kilowatts on that same spot. I think the key to what we're doing here uh, speaks to where the world is headed to, to a large degree. There's a lot of environmental regulations out there right now that, uh, that are saying that uh, we're putting too much stuff in the air and uh, we are going to see more and more of those. Uh, they're taking coal plants out as we speak and uh, some, of our, uh, uh, some of our more environmentally friendly uh, sources of energy are, are going to become more and more viable as we move along. Uh, a piece of what we're doing here is really just trying to, to get ahead of the curve. Um, <coughs> there aren't very many municipals out there at this point in time that have any kind of solar experience. We believe that the best way for us to get that experience is to uh, get hands on. You know, we establish <coughs> a small array and we kind of grow from there. Uh, the spot that we're looking at is, is uh, very visible. We want the, the community to be able to see what we're doing. Um, it's, uh, it's close to distribution and it's secure. So uh, we believe it is the best spot for this small array and then for this educational opportunity. Um, I repeat that a big piece of this is educational, not only for, for our uh, employees, but uh, we hope for the community. We, we hope to get involved with the schools, with the universities, and, and use this as a, a means by which to, to grow knowledge uh, for all of those groups uh, in this process. Uh, the total cost of this is, is around $60,000. Um, we believe that we'll be able to offset uh, between 15 and 20 of that uh, with soft costs, which is using our people to do a portion of the work. Um, and. Uh, 
we believe that we're going to be able to do that out of but we don't believe we know we're going to be able to do that out of, that out of budget which uh, which is commendable to the end that uh, that uh, our crews have been very prudent with the use of the funds that they have available at that point in time there'll be no uh, no debt service <coughs> in, in this project whatsoever um, we, we're not coming to you telling you that that the cost of of solar is is really viable right now uh, it, it truly is not it's still expensive and although it's come down over the last 10 years it's still we can buy it cheaper on the market we'll be the first to tell you that but we believe also that that like I said before that we're going to see these types of energy become viable over a period of time and it's uh, mm -hmm. going to be important that we understand how to, to move forward with these there's some options uh, that will be available to us as we move forward that uh, if, if we know what we're doing we can move forward um, one of the questions that's been asked a number of times is you know that that money how how does it affect a, a customer's bill and and we can literally tell you that we're talking about thousands of a cent on a customer's bill it's uh, it really is inconsequential how that will affect the community community at that point in time and so we are here tonight just seeking your approval of moving forward with this project and uh, getting it off the ground. Okay. Any questions? Yeah. Any more questions? Um, I mentioned a couple weeks ago when this was presented that um, one thing I, I like about, about the city of Ottawa is that we try to be a leader um, regionally and some of the things that we're doing. And our fiber network is one of those examples of now there's not a lot of communities that have fiber, but it's been a great resource um, and utility for our community as we do development for um, industrial park and other places. So I think this is just kind of along those same those same lines. It's like you said, this isn't going to <coughs> be powering all of our houses every day, um, but it, it's just a way for us to get in and learn about how to do this. Um, Absolutely. And, and it's really a good test. I, I, I'm glad you mentioned the educational with the Boy Scouts here. Hopefully in a year from now, they'll be able to take a tour of yeah. the power plant and not only see um, solar but all of the the ways that we can um, generate our own power here in, in our community um, but I think to uh, I think you're kind of alluding to this but this is kind of t a, um, thinking about being able to control our own costs in the future and there may be it may could there come a time when solar is viable as a option to be a larger array here in our community um, but that's that's what our goal is all the time is to be able to keep the cost of energy whether we're buying it off the market or, or producing it here locally to keep that cost down for everyone yeah. and I think that speaks to a number of things that we do we've also discussed you know the 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 addition of wind to our portfolio so that that we begin to spread our portfolio out into some of those more environmentally friendly types of energy and this is just a piece of that Very nice. I had emailed um, Dennis a question earlier and I mean sometimes with things like this they come with a large maintenance plan that you know that cost can kind of sneak up on you after you approve it but I think you had mentioned that the city plans on maintaining them ourselves yeah right? that is exactly the reason that we want to be a part of this we have picked Cromwell uh, uh, to be uh, the, the the leader for this the contractor for this but we also intend for our crews to work with Cromwell as this goes in and then any maintenance that's done from here forward will be done by our crews as part of the educational process. And Dennis, at one time too, we mentioned about the cost, uh, the return on investment may take X number of years. Is that like about 15 years? Yeah, return on investment is relatively slow, uh, but that's looking at today's costs, right. you know, and. Uh, I wish I had a crystal ball to stand here and yeah. tell you exactly what costs we're going to do over the next 10 years, but uh, we all know that costs are going to escalate, you know, to right. to whatever end that may be. Uh, as those costs escalate, that number will come down. Yeah. Definitely. But uh, we use today's cost to to come to come up with those. So almost figures. like 15 or less years we'll pay for it itself, and it had like a 30-year life to it. So that remaining yes. 15 plus years can really be a benefit, my dear child. I absolutely I commend you for that and I know it has become less expensive over time ten years ago it was very expensive and it was only just a feel-good thing for people to do and my feel-good has a certain price to it and I don't think I would have gone for this several years ago but the price point is good now especially that 15-year cost to 30-year life that's a big plus for me as far as the way I look at it so 
commissioners if i may reiterate something um this is about lowering our carbon footprint um and i believe that we along with the um privately owned utilities the pous well i know it's beyond belief are going to be called up on more and more to have non-fossil fuel fuel sources in our portfolio and as we have uh, um, kind of alluded to um, right now director tharp is also along with kansas municipal energy agency taking a look at how to introduce um, wind power into our portfolio so um, in the next several months you'll be seeing a proposal coming from us for <coughs> putting wind power in there so um, I, I it, it's about lowering the carbon footprint and it's going to I think it's going to get even more dicier if the coal plants get closed <coughs> to the extent that we think they will questions okay entertain a motion item number 16 if we have one mr. mayor commissioner uh, I move that we approve the uh, we were given the phonetic the photovoltaic oh, project well said okay <laughs> is there a second I'll second <laughs> any other discussion on that if not we'll take a roll call vote please how do you vote, Commissioner Graves? Yes. Commissioner Dickinson? Yes. Mayor Skidmore? I vote yes to. Motion carries. Thanks, Dennis. Good job. All right. Item number 17. 2015 Audit Letter <coughs> of Understanding. Letter from Mize Hauser & Company confirming agreement to audit the financial statements of the city for the year ending ended December 31 <coughs> of 2015. Um, one more thing on a previous item. Um, yeah. I think sometimes uh, you know the return on investment is a is an interesting view of some of this stuff we have to do because um, if you looked at it strictly as cost benefit it just doesn't work out and I think sometimes that is 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 hard for us to understand and hard for our citizens to understand but I think on, on this particular case, and I appreciate you approving the um, solar panel. I didn't want, I didn't, uh, the solar power, I didn't want to mispronounce that. So the city attorney over there writes me a little note about how to pronounce it. But I think that these things in the long run will help mitigate rate increases for our customers in the future. So at least I hope so. So uh, right now, I'm Director Bird. Scott Bird because he's out of town today. Can and you I'm whistle? Pardon? I can said, you can you whistle? whistle? Can I whistle? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I can, but I won't. Okay. <laughs> so I guess we could all whistle in unison. Yeah. Scott could see this and be embarrassed, but we won't do that. So. Um, what I'd like to present to you tonight on his behalf is a letter of engagement with Mize, Howard and Company, PA. <clears throat> to do our 2015 audit next year. Um, as Director Bird indicated to you at our study session, uh, we have all been well pleased with how they have done their work. This will be the fourth year of uh, agreement with them and the plan is that we go out next year and issue RFPs and take a look at, at locally and other um, auditing firms that are interested in submitting proposals to us for another three to four years of auditing and um, there is some good uh, there, there are some very good valid reasons for switching up auditors uh, one of them is that you get a different look at things if you keep the same auditor for 20 years you, you kind of I think organizations miss out on things and um, it doesn't hurt to spread it around so that um, you can you, you can uh, work with a firm that you're comfortable with and that helps keep you on track when they're doing their auditing of your book so this particular letter of engagement is for twenty four thousand three hundred and forty five dollars and we would ask for your approval 
Okay. Any other questions on this? <coughs> I think just to add to that the importance of a, of a good, uh, uh, a detailed audit, a uh, challenging audit, and then a successful one, hopefully, will also helps our borrowing costs to keep at a minimum. Um, um, our audits have helped us have a bond rating for the first time, and in in, uh, we received one several years ago. And our audits are what helps us sell bonds um, that are are attractive to people who buy those bonds. So um, what, what Mayor Skidmore said is true, is that these things aren't easy. A audit should not be easy. And um, they, they come in, they help you, they look at the books, they make sure you're doing what you're doing and help give you suggestions on how to do <coughs> things better at times. I so said that we're in the middle of an audit at our bank right now, and they wanted to see a copy of the deed to the bank property we've owned out here for 10 years and paid taxes on for 10 years to prove we owned it. I don't think we would pay taxes on if we didn't own it. That's not a good enough comment. You've got to show them a proof of a copy of a deed, in which we did today. But uh, i just give you an example of sometimes, and it's a different auditor than we've had in the past, and you're right, they do look at it with a different set of glasses sometimes, and that's a good to have that mix of people looking at it. So you're right, Richard. Good. Well said. <coughs> Any other questions? We'll sure to entertain uh, item number 17 if there's a motion. Mr. Mayor. Commissioner. I move that we approve the letter that confirms that Mize Hauser will conduct <coughs> the city's 2015 financial audit. Very good. Is there a second? I'll second that. There's a second. Okay, we'll take a roll call vote, please. How do you vote, Commissioner Dickinson? Yes. Commissioner Graves? Yes. Mayor Skidmore? And I vote yes, too. Motion carries. Thanks, Richard. Thank you, Commissioners. Go right next to the so item there. Is next up is <laughs> you're good report say okay I'm city, city manager, manager yeah. you're right so uh, I don't have a long report I just want to say that this weekend on Saturday is the Veterans Day parade um, I hope people come out watch that parade it, it really is um, I, I hope that our citizens know how unique the community is to have a Veterans Day parade um, Mayor Skidmore will be laying the wreath at the memorial down there as part of the duties of his office um, I grew up with um, parades um, such as this. Uh, if I was privileged <coughs> to live in the town that was the home of the 34th President of the United States, and it was while he was still in office, so you can figure out the math. <laughs> okay, but it was. Um, it's it's uh, it's a time we can honor our veterans, and then next Wednesday is Veterans Day, and we'll be closed. And I would ask everyone. If you have a veteran in your family, if you have a, a, a friend that's a veteran, just just uh, uh, simply say thank you. Um, check in with them. Uh, we, we have a lot of people putting a lot on the line so we can come here and we can have free elections and we can conduct our business in a free America. And I thought I would just take this opportunity to read the names of city employees who are veterans. Um, now, somebody may say, well, my name isn't there, but this is a current list we have. We went out and we asked people, we asked supervisors, we asked employees to let us know. So if it's not there, it's not, it's not on there because um, we deliberately left it off. It's because we just didn't have that information. So Clancy Moore, Michael Hafley. Mark Gibbs, Adam Weingartner, Sean Dillon, Mark Goodwin, Keith Chambers, Bill Ferguson, Blaine Stewart, Joseph Carrier, James Hawkins, Chad Bird, Oscar Taylor, Ron Hughes, Tim Ahrens, Bob Kroll, Shane Gibbs, Tom Bryant, and Ryan Rose. So, thank you for their service to our great country. Absolutely. Thank you, Richard. Very well said. We'll go to the report by city commissioners. Emily, we'll start with you. How about? I don't have anything. You have anything? Okay. Mm -hmm. Sean? Uh, congratulations to the Kansas City Royals. Mm -hmm. I think that they won something. <coughs> A couple people showed up yesterday to celebrate it, it looked like. <laughs> um, I also want to say uh, tomorrow night uh, at the Swan Art Center from 6 to 7.30, uh, 
we will be opening a new gallery that uh, focuses on high school students from Franklin County, from all four districts in Franklin County. So I encourage you, if you can't make it out tomorrow night, they'll be up for the next about four to six weeks. Um, but come out, and there's some pretty amazing art that's created by high school students within our, our county. So um, that's all I have. Very good. And yes, congratulations to the Royals. I went to the parade. I didn't get very close. They couldn't get close enough. I had to park almost four miles away to get there. And it was a long <coughs> walk. But anyway, then I had to walk back. But uh, anyway, it was part of the group. It was fun just to be there to say I was there. If they win next year, I'll watch it on television. So I think I've decided <laughs> what safer place to go. Uh, Richard, you might address on the, your unshavenness if you want to comment about what the purpose of that is. I thought that was a I meant to catch you before you got sat down. <coughs> I'd be happy to do that. It's not because, well, it is no shave November, and no shave November is a um, partner to October, which highlights breast cancer in women. And what no shave November um, does is highlight prostate cancer in men. And the theory about this is, is that what you don't um, spend on razors and shaving cream is that you will go make a donation to a cancer agency of your choice. So um, whether you shave or whether you don't, um, uh, I would encourage people to be aware of that. It's a month where um, men ought to go get tested over 50 if they, if they um, don't. Um, it is one of the most curable cancers there are if it's caught early. So. Um, now, Mayor, I know you're not participating this year, but can we count on a donation from no, you? No, absolutely. So, okay. Good so, we're running a little contest in the city uh, with several people who are doing that. So, we'll have a little fun doing this. Um, but the, these are important things for us, male and female, to keep in front of us and to keep tabs on and to help contribute money so that research, not only research can take place, but there are some local agencies that you can give your money to and they help families who have family members with cancer that go to treatment that have expenses associated uh, with <coughs> it. So thank you, Mayor. Yes, I'm glad you, I just wanted people, if they saw you on the television, not to think you slept in your car last night. So, okay, <laughs> we're all right. Uh, I will say too about the, the prostate cancer, that's what took my father, prostate cancer, and so I have a certain affinity to that as well myself. So we'll make sure to make a donation. Also just to uh, mention about my dad, uh, God rest his soul, he was a, a veteran of the Air Force. And my father-in-law is still alive, he's a veteran of the Army, he's 92, and uh, he was in the Battle of the Bulge. He was captured for the, from the, in, in a German POW camp for about six or seven months until the war ended. But uh, he's had quite a few stories about that, and it's fascinating to look at our wo World War II veterans. There aren't very many left uh, among us, and it's nice to have those stories and have those people still around us. And we'll probably take him out for lunch because I think it's a free lunch in certain places on Wednesday. So I'll buy in. I'm buying, so uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll go for that. Uh, on the announcements, I guess we've got a couple things there. Of course, we've got a couple people at the NLC conference. We'll have a study session on the 9th. We've got a special LKM regional supper in Olathe. Some of us will be attending. Uh, study session on the 9th. You see the Veterans Day. Then a special, I'm going to bring this up November 16th, a special call. We're going to have our regular uh, study session from 5 to 6. And then at 6.30 we'll have a special call to talk about the Walt's, uh, Walnut Street Prairie Spirit Trail discussion. And they'll be right here in the city commission chambers. If there's nothing else to come before the city commission, is there a motion to adjourn? I can't remember whose turn it was. Yeah, <laughs> I've lost track. Oh, one more thing. Go ahead. I might say that we have guests from a scout troop in the oh. in the uh, chambers today. Um, I was um, I taught the government merit badges for a long time. Uh, we welcome you here, and if you have questions after the meeting's over, uh, we will be happy to answer them. So, thank Great. you for coming. Yeah, glad to have you all there. You come anytime. Is there a motion to adjourn? I move we adjourn. Commissioner, second? I'll second. Second. All favor say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. We are adjourned.